It is Sunday, March 3rd, day three of The Great Experiment. Thank you for doing this with me and so many others across the country. For these 10 days, we're pressing in in a special way, asking God to work in amazing ways in our family, in our community, in the nation. Uh, in the history of this country, when there's been revivals, when there's been mass numbers of people coming to faith, it's always been when a large number of Christians repent of their sins, pray like crazy, and do what the Lord tells them to do. It's not come through political means. Now, it's important as Christians to be engaged in the political process, and things are happening now. You have Bernie Sanders who's getting in the race, and Howard Schultz came in recently, and you have Kamala Harris and these other people. And over the next year and a half, there'll be you know, wall-to-wall coverage in all of this. And the Christian should be engaged. However, it's not the source of vitality and change for our country and our nation, ultimately. It is the Lord himself. And the Lord's laid out in the scriptures what pleases him, how we can draw close to him so that he will draw close to us. It is through repentance. It's through prayer. It's through fasting. It's obeying the Lord in every regard. This is what uh, uh, pleases him and brings him close. And uh, he pours out a spirit in greater abundance. And so that's what this is all about. It's what day and night Org is about is what the great experiment, experiment is all about, so that we would draw closer to the Lord. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're listening to the Lord. I hope you're following through on listening to the Holy Spirit every morning about what he would have you do. Yesterday, the Lord had me um, uh, call my mom and uh, check up on her. She's in Texas. I'm here in New York. So it's a small thing, but uh, it's an important thing. And uh, whatever the Holy Spirit's putting on your heart, is what we need to do. Now, listening to the Holy Spirit isn't as hard as some people think. As a matter of fact, whenever you confess your sins, you're listening to the Holy Spirit. Whenever you ask God to tell you, is there anything in your life that's displeasing to Him? Or you ask Him to show you if there's anyone that you haven't forgiven. And He puts those things in your mind. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Now, of course, we can mishear the Holy Spirit. I've certainly met people who have confessed sins that weren't sins. And it's because they weren't hearing from the Holy Spirit and they didn't know the scriptures well enough to know that it wasn't the Holy Spirit. So a key factor in hearing from the Lord well is knowing the scriptures well so that you can filter everything that comes to you through the scriptures. And so, because it could be the devil putting thoughts in your minds. It could be your own soul coming through with things and you want to make sure it's of the Lord. And there's a lot of examples in the Bible of people hearing from God all the time. Jesus even says in uh, John chapter 10 that his sheep know his voice. And there's other um, instances where it's obvious people get some sort of supernatural knowledge. I was reading this in Acts 14 about the Apostle Paul, and he's in Lystra, and says, There was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. So somehow here, Paul got some sort of information. Maybe he somehow just saw it physically on the man's face, but he also could have gotten it by the Holy Spirit in his conscience in some way. In the same way as God is often speaking to us, and it's up to us to pause and to recognize that. And as you have your morning and evening devotions, I ask you to ask the Holy Spirit, what would he have you do that day? Or what, what does he want to talk to you about? And listen to him and then follow through. If you have questions about it's really scriptural or not, uh, talk to a friend, talk to someone who knows the Bible well, so you can make sure whatever you're doing is in line with God's purposes. This is essential to have a vital walk with the Lord. Part of that is to be able to hear from God and to respond in faith in different situations. Most people have some situations where they feel like they clearly heard from the Lord, at least on this occasion. But as we cultivate it, it can become more normal, more natural. Uh, this is day three of The Great Experiment, and we've got uh, seven more days to go. Thanks for doing this. Continue to send feedback in. Uh, seek God at dayandnight.org. Send emails. Tell us what your Joshua Faith Challenge is. Also, tell us what God is doing in your life. Tell you if you've done your Joshua Faith Challenge, what has come about as a result of that. We want to hear all this, and we'll post some of the stuff and everything else. So the Lord bless you. May he strengthen you as you continue to draw close to him. There's nothing better than drawing close to the Lord. God bless.